Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 4 of our understanding the ABC of Docker video series. And in this video, I'll be talking about working with Docker and containers. So before watching this part, I request you to watch part 3 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. So let's get our hand dirty with Docker's then. So finally, it's time to get into the real usage of Docker after a lot of theories. So for past three videos, we were discussing everything theoretically about Docker and containers. So in this video, from this video at least, we are going to start working with the Dockers. So the Docker can be executed via PowerShell of Windows or the command prompt of Windows as well. Or you can execute with terminal from Mac or Linux operating system. So you can use any of these. So some of the commands available with Docker's are listed right here. We will be discussing about some of these uh, commands while we start working with it today and we will understand how things works. So behind the scene, as I already said, all these commands are actually executed in a tiny little Linux distribution which sits on your Hyper-V of Windows 10 Pro. Remember in a previous video I was talking about something like Hyper-V should be enabled if you want to use Docker in your Windows 10 64-bit edition. That's what it is. You should have a Hyper-V enabled into your machine and the reason is because this Linux distribution is actually sitting in the Hyper-V and it also automatically enables the switch and the virtual switch and the, uh, the internet connectivity with your network so that it can get the containers from the internet and deploy that into your Hyper-V machine, right? So it looks something like this. So in your Hyper-V it, it will be listed as a Mobi Linux VM. So that's what it is, right? So some of the famous commands that we're going to work today are going to be something like this. Docker help. So that's very, very important because without this, you will be in a very great trouble because not every command is just kind of uh, very, very straightforward. So you need to uh, go to help and understand how things work. So there are so many different arguments available for each and every command. So you should actually look into those commands help and understand how things works. And some of the commands for the containers are going to be docker create. So if you're going to create your own container, then you will be using this docker create. And then there is something called docker pull. So if you're going to pull the docker container from the hub.docker.com, then you should be using this docker pull. And there is something called docker push. So if you're going to push the changes of your container into docker hub, then you'll be using this docker push. Docker PS is going to list you all the process running in your Docker. And there is something called Docker PS hyphen A, which actually shows all the containers, which is actually being executed. And also it shows you all the information of these containers with the, uh, with the container ID and the name or the tag names and the port numbers which is being exposed and all those things probably we'll be talking about in our upcoming course upcoming videos of this course right and then there is something called docker rm uh, which is to say that uh, just remove this particular container uh, from docker similarly there is something called docker stop which is going to stop the executing container from uh, your current instance so these are some of the commands which is available on kind of very famous commands. And so let's quickly get started then and see how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to PowerShell. So this is my desktop of uh, Windows 10 64 bit edition. I have already installed the latest version of Windows 10 with all the updates available. And we are going to hop over to the, uh, to the Windows PowerShell. We're not going to use the Docker for Windows. Rather, we're going to make use of Windows PowerShell. So let me quickly show you how the Docker power, uh, Docker for Windows looks like. If you go to the setting, you can see that uh, there will be a general tab which actually shows you what are things to be locked. And there is a shared drive. I have never used this so far, but I know that with shared drive, you can share a particular drive of a machine with the, uh, with the operating system or the, with the containers which you are running. Right. And then there is an advanced tab which will tell you how many CPUs that you're going to leverage for your uh, for your container operating system. So I'm really going to stick with the default, which is two and the memory is uh, two GB, which is OK. And the network port, I have not changed anything, which is pretty much default. And there is a proxy. You can also uh, set the proxy server for your uh, dockers. 
and there is a docker daemon and there is uh, diagnostic and feedback and this uh, reset is kind of very very helpful so if you ever run into uh, some problem with your docker container uh, maybe due to the installation or something like that then you can easily go and reset the factory default or sometimes what happens i have faced this personally in my machine uh, maybe it's because of the beta version if you keep on uh, changing the networks uh, sometimes the internet connectivity with your docker containers and the real network will not happen so you need to reset start the docker uh, from right here right so this is the uh, this is the docker's uh, ui and i will quickly show you how it looks like in my hyper v machine so you can see this is my hyper v manager and this is what it is the mobi linux vm this is the uh, actual operating system which is running in my hyper v machine so you can see that once you install the docker for windows there will be a mobile Linux VM for you right here. And even if you try to connect this particular operating system, you'll probably see nothing, just an empty console kind of stuff, and there, there'll be no interactions. So you can just see the black screen, right? But you can see that actually for this particular virtual machine, if you go right here to the uh, settings, and if you go to the network adapter, there will be something called Docker NAT. So in your uh, network, you'll, uh, it will automatically create a Docker NAT for you. And uh, this Docker NAT is currently in an internal, uh, internal network mode, internal switch. So uh, if you go to the virtual switch manager, you can see that it is uh, internal only, which means it's gonna use your uh, network, which is available out of the box. Right. So these are the different kind of settings. So if you ever run into any of the problem with the installation, you have to probably see if it is running or not. If not, you can manually turn on or you can do a restart Docker. Right. All right. So let's quickly see some of the commands. So for that, I'm going to flip to PowerShell and there we go. So I will show you the first and foremost command, which is nothing but the docker help and you can see that I'm typing docker and double slash help so if you type help like this do not execute it act as a parameter but this is the command and you can see these are the different kinds of helps available within your docker so attach build commit CP which is nothing but copy of files and folders between a container and the local file system let's create deploy there are so many things probably you can just go through uh, these commands manually but the one which I'm going to show you this time is going to be this the docker ps and you can see that currently I am running the uh, Ubuntu image in my docker so don't worry about it yet because in our next video we will actually be downloading these kinds of container into our docker so don't worry about it yet but as of now just for demonstration purpose I'm showing you that currently it is running a Ubuntu uh, container in my instance and what you can do you can actually do a lot of things like docker uh, ps hyphen a will show you uh, all the informations uh, for this and you can actually stop the container uh, if you want by using uh, the stop command so you can see that there is something called docker stop and then you have to paste the container ID Right. So this is the container ID for your Docker, which is uh, for your container, which is actually running your Docker. And if I just run this, there we go. So it is stopped. And now if I just see the Docker PS, so you can see that the container is not running right now. So it, it has just stopped. Right. So if I want to show all the images, which is currently downloaded in my Docker instance, you can actually see Docker and then images. So these are the different kinds of images, oops, images which is actually available in my in my machine. You can see it is a uh, Ubuntu, Selenium Node, Chrome Debug, Selenium Node, Firefox Debug, Selenium Node, Firefox, Hub, etc. So this is uh, especially for uh, running a Selenium automation using uh, Docker, right? So you can see these are the different kinds of uh, containers, images available in my uh, machine. And you can also uh, see the log files of these images actually. For, for instance, if I want to see the image of a Docker, but unfortunately, you can see that currently there is no process running in my machine. So, oops, let me 
run a particular uh, container then probably you can do something like this docker and there's a command called run so you can actually see uh, docker hyphen help you can see there is something called as run so run a command in a new container so you can actually do that so what I'm going to do uh, something like docker run and if you want to see what are the different kinds of parameters actually available within this run you can actually do something like this oh my god there are so many uh, different kinds of options available for this run you can see there is something called a which is for attach a value and there is something called hyphen C for the CPU share uh, CPU set and there is hyphen D which is for detach uh, and runs the containers in the background and prints the container ID that's it and uh, there is something called uh, device read value and so many things so anyway, there is an environment value value uh, there is a interactive so if you set I it is for interactive so you can do that as well and uh, memory strings and there is something called p which is for the published value and this is kind of very very important so if you want to publish uh, a containers port then you will be using this hyphen p and there is a hyphen capital p which is uh, to say publish all publish all the exposed to port to the random ports it will automatically publish for you so you don't have to really use this guy right so there are so many things available within this particular run itself so let's quickly use some of the commands maybe uh, docker and uh, if I want to run Ubuntu then I can just use run and the container name as uh, Ubuntu so I'm just gonna type Ubuntu and I'm gonna hit enter and you can see that it will start the Ubuntu uh, container for us and you can actually see the Ubuntu container will be running right here by doing so you can see that the container is currently running for me and the command is uh, hyphen bash uh, hyphen bin slash bash so you can actually use this for performing a bash uh, execution of the command in there right so these are the different kinds of stuff that you can do with the uh, with the commands of the docker but currently I'm really not talking a lot more detail about these uh, commands but while we start working with the containers we can actually get through some of these commands and understand how things works so that's it guys. Thank you once again for watching this video and have a great day.